this is a great way to conclude this podcast. <clears throat> Jacob Oden, Bryce, who we have thought from the beginning, even when maybe he was leaning to Michigan State for a brief period of time, even then, I thought, let's say he had committed to, to Michigan State. Let's say he had silently committed to Michigan State. I didn't think it was going to stick. I always thought that Jacob Oden would wind up at Michigan. The ties just run way too deep for him to wind up someplace else. Jacob Oden, Michigan's latest commitment. Yeah, so this guy, six foot one, 108 pounds from Harper Woods, Michigan. Uh, composite four-star across the board. Every you know network looks at him as a four-star had over 30 offers, came down to the top five. I want to say Michigan and Michigan State. I would say Penn State and Tennessee were the main schools in the mix there. And Sam, like you hinted at, at one point, he had crystal balls favoring Michigan State after his spring game visit to East Lansing this past year. And a lot of people just, I don't want to say they assumed he was going there, but I think it was – a nice way of saying I think Michigan State leads at this point. Maybe that, that they weren't going to get him, get him, but at least they led at that point. But Steve Klinkscale, big props to him. This was a recruitment. He's and this is a family he's known for years. You know, this is not someone new. Um, and he had been working on this recruitment very hard. He's got a very good relationship not only with Jacob but with his father Rod. Um, that goes back years since when he started recruiting, I want to say, at Kentucky, maybe even before that. Um, this was a school and a guy he always talked to and uh, looked at for prospects. And overall, I think it was just the comfortability of Michigan. You know, he knows a lot of guys on the roster. I remember when I went to see Will Johnson, his signing a couple of years ago in Detroit, Jacob Bowden was at it. You know, that's how much he – really looks at those guys and really cares for them as well. So overall, great pickup. This is now, I want to say, the fifth four-star fifth four star in the six-man class of Michigan right now. It's hovering around the top ten range. And the biggest thing is, I think, you know, we, we pointed out, talking about the 2023 class, the pressure that it might probably now applies to this 2024 class. Well, they're off to a great start. And this is a guy that I think, when you look at where he fits to, I would consider him a defensive athlete more on the back end because he can play corner, he can play safety, he could even play some nickel. And we, Sam, you and me have seen him at several uh, camp settings where he's moved around, he's done certain things, but a very fluid with the hips, got great ball skills, he's got good speed, and he's got a high football IQ. And that's the type of guy that fits exactly what Steve Klingscale is looking for at the back end of his defense. Steve, uh, Jacob Oden, Michigan's latest pickup. Good to get a four-star instater. Uh, yeah, this was one I think if we at the beginning of the cycle, either when things got, I think this was a guy we probably felt like Michigan was going to get, or you know, it would have been a at least a mild surprise if he had committed elsewhere. Uh, yeah, like Bryce said, the versatility in the defensive backfield, I think, is the, the biggest asset here. Um, and a guy, you know, like I said, a guy that we've already talked about for so long, I don't I don't feel like down the road is going to end up getting the due as far as how big of a part of the class uh, he really is. I mean, we know Michigan really likes guys that can, can move around in the defensive backfield, uh, you know, and, and Odin uh, really adds to that. And, yeah, I mean, the whole Michigan State stuff, I think we've talked about that a couple times I mean, maybe he must have had a good visit there the one time or something, but uh, this was one it felt like when Michigan wanted to kind of put the pedal of the metal, uh, they were going to be in control of. So, yeah, you know, one thing real quick, I saw Ohio, I saw an article about Ohio State focusing more regionally because of NIL, right? So, uh, you know, I got to think, you know, Michigan in a, at least somewhat of a similar, like you got to, you can't let guys like this, you know, end up elsewhere, right? So, in a way, you know, a much, a very, very big commitment in that regard too, because if you have guys that can play in your backyard, of course you always want those guys, but there, I think there might be even a little bit more pressure to land some of those guys now, uh, because you're not going to, at least at this time and place right now, you're not going to get into the, 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 you know, you're not going to go deep with the Oregon's, the Texas A&M's, the Miami's, the Louisville's, all those schools 
right now, you know. So so getting a guy like Odin, a legitimate across the board four star, an important position is 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 bigger for Michigan than I think people might initially believe or, or see. Yeah, you you raise a great point that gets back to our previous discussion. People need to know most campuses, most fan bases in the country are complaining about NIL, including Ohio State's. They don't think that their NIL is good enough, which is crazy when you consider that they're more aggressive with their NIL than, say, Michigan. There's just, there's, there's no, with their approach, I should say. But even they are having to adjust. I mean, they are all, they've always been a nationally recruiting team, but they're realizing that because of NIL, there are certain recruitments because you can't, you just can't be, you, you can't, go as hard NIL wise with your entire recruiting class. It's just not that's no one can do it except for maybe AM. But no one else can can do that. I said maybe, right? Uh but they realize regional has to be more of an emphasis. What has Michigan been doing over the last couple of years anyway? Illinois, Ohio has become more of an emphasis. With Kirk Campbell, Pittsburgh or uh, PA is going to become more of an emphasis, DMV, this this sort of area, this region that has fed Michigan for as long as we've been watching them becomes a greater emphasis in the recruiting dynamic, I think even more so in the NIL uh, era. And to your point also, Steve, look, Jacob Oden is a guy you have to get. He's a legacy. His parents are Michigan alums, right? He grew up a Michigan fan. His dad was not going to push him to Michigan. He sent guys all over the place. Desmond King, Cedric Lattimore, all those guys go to Iowa, right? They were, you know, Iowa is the top school on his list. But at the end of the day, you know, Michigan had an advantage with this one. And you got to get him. And I agree with you, Bryce. He he can be a chess piece on the back end. Uh, he's athletic enough to play some at corner. He's a coach's kid. So he's a high IQ player. He can play corner nickel and safety. I think he'll start out as a, as a safety and see where things go. And he could be the quarterback of your defense. I just think he's a really, really versatile guy, a really heady guy, and a leader on your back end, and maybe a leader in this recruiting class. 